strength and conditioning coach, coached by Carla. She says I should be doing this after every lift, doing a little bit of uh, cardio or, or endurance stuff. Endurance space. But I'm running around so much all the time that by the time I'm, I finish lifting, I gotta get my meal in, my protein in, and then by that time, it's almost time to start classes. So yeah. spending 10 minutes on cardio doesn't seem like something that I can fit in right now. <laughs> Until I watch myself and then I was like, shit, I need more cardio. Ready. seconds in I started feeling the arms get super heavy yeah you know which is ideally the goal you know it's, it's not when, when I hit the bag I'm not trying to simulate a fight I mean obviously I'm still trying to be as mindful as possible with my technique because um, it's very easy to get lazy on the bag so I'm still trying to make sure I'm moving my head but for me most importantly because if you guys have seen any of my my sparring matches my hands tend to to travel a lot, um, you know, and for a variety of reasons, some of it is strategy, other times it's just I'm legit tired, you know, so right now that I just did arms and working on the bag, it was like I'm gonna try to get my arms as tired as possible and make sure that they stay at my face, you know, so that's that, that was kind of the goal for that workout, because I knew it wasn't gonna be long, just a quick burst, but that's what it is. I think going back to, to what we were talking about with goals, you know, some goals are the short bursts, you know, I wasn't trying to say that, okay, all your goals need to be long-term goals because I don't believe that either. You know, the, the little burst right now, hey, clearly I got tired and my arms gassed out, but the goal was to make it for three minutes. You know, the next time I do this workout, the goal is going to be to go for two three-minute rounds and then three three-minute rounds and then four. You know, so the little goals are going to be what kind of helps build up to the uh, to the big long term goals. For the workout, I try to go as as blank as possible. You know, I, there's a an Arnold Schwarzenegger video that I used to watch every time before I lifted weights because he talked. He was one of the reasons why. I stopped listening to music for a long time when I was lifting because he talked about the, the mind and body connection. You got to put in your mind the muscles that are being worked when you're working out. It's not just moving the bar or moving the dumbbells that's going to do the work. Your mind's going to also help do the work. You know, so I started implementing that and that's when I first started seeing results physically from my, my lifting. Um, but then I was like, okay, if this works for my lifts, it's got to work for, for MMA too. And that's what I started doing because as I started coaching more and then I started working less with my coaches, I was like, I need to make sure that I'm staying on point. So I would start watching my videos back of me training and noticing all these little things, you know, and that's when I started paying more attention to it, which is why right now that I was lifting, I didn't realize how hard it was to talk and, and lift at the same time when you're trying to put the, the focus on the muscles. But like with my striking, I started noticing specifically me not engaging my core was throwing me off a lot. My punches felt like a lot weaker. I had less balance. Um, the footwork itself, like I was dragging my feet. I wasn't pushing off with my calves um, and my toes and stuff, you know. So I started noticing those things. And then once I started putting the mind and body together and everything started flowing a little bit better, my balance got better, the pops got better, you know, and I just started seeing Bigger improvements, not because I was learning anything new, but just because I was focusing on what I was doing. You know, half the battle in achieving your goals is just focusing on what the goal is. But... I love that. That's a great quote. Quote it. Tweet it. Follow me on Twitter. At Ties MMA on Twitter. That's my goal, you know, in, in life for myself and for my students, you know, that I've talked about on the podcast. Like, to me, it doesn't matter how many fighters we have. I, I, you know, I just had a conversation with Leo about him coming back to the to the cage, and he wants to, and he wants to see how far he can take it, you know. But that might change, you know. 
my goals had changed in the past. I wanted to fight full time and I wanted to coach full time. And now it's just spending time with my students, not just the fighters, but the rest of them has really shown me and, and the conversations that I've had with them. If you choose to fight, your last fight is sooner than later. And are you gonna stop training because of that? My last fight was almost 10 years ago. It was, I, I didn't think it was gonna be my last fight, but I'm approaching 10 years and not only have I kept training, but I'm 10 times a better martial artist than I was 10 years ago. Might be a little bit slower than I was 10 years ago, but definitely smart. And my, my training still improves. I, I just told my class today, you know, we're, we're gonna set, spend some time focusing on, on a different way to use our footwork. It's not that the footwork that we were teaching before is wrong, because we're still gonna be using that, mm -hmm. but it's just a different way to put it in your brain. You know, and it's not because of anything wrong, we've had success in the cage, we've had success in grappling tournaments, you know, so it, losing or failure isn't what drives us to make things better. My mindset is we can always be better. Even when our fighter wins or we, we bring back a medal from a grappling tournament, we can always be better. I can always be better. I can be a better coach. You know, I can be a better fighter, I can be a better martial artist, and I don't need a loss or a failure to show me that. If a loss and failure come, yes, that, that's also going to help me learn and see where we're at and push to be better. But I don't need that. I don't need a win, I don't need a loss, I just have the drive to want to be better. And because this sport changed me for the better. And I just want to be able to, to help other people find that too whether it's through training, fighting, teaching, coaching, whatever it is that they want. The, the peace and the balance that I've felt the past few years, it's, it's priceless. And my goal is just through, through the podcast, through my classes, now through this YouTube channel, we're gonna really try to make sure that, that as many people as possible can find that. I'm not trying to be a tutorial video. I'm not, you know, a lot of people have asked, you know, I'll, I'll show things. I'll show things that work for me. I'll show things that have worked for, for my students and for my, my competitors. But mostly I want to show the mindset behind it and the lifestyle behind it. There's thousands of them, thousands of people online that you can learn things from. Mine's not better, mine's not worse, mine's not equal to all of them. It's just different, you know, if the stuff that we do or the way that I say things connect with you, awesome. If you listen to somebody else and it works for you, awesome. As long as you're doing it, as long as you're training, as long as you're working on making yourself better and the people around you better, that is my only goal with this. By no means am I saying we're the best gym. By no means am I saying that my style is the best style because I, I tell my students all the time, I'm not trying to teach my style. I'm trying to help people find their style. You know, and that's what Bruce Lee left us. You know, and that that's my only goal with this channel. And with my life. Ooh. Say hello to your team ah. Tats knows. Arms. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I can't <breathe. laughs>